The Untouchable True School Sports Empire probably presents something the boxing game's been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, this isn't gonna be a news video. This isn't gonna be anything related to what's going on in boxing right now. This is actually gonna be uh, one of those boxing explained videos. One of those videos where, you know, we, 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 we talk about things in boxing and try to make sense of them. Like last year, I did these kind of videos during the early stages of COVID. You know, I explained what the Don King Act was. I explained why Japanese fighters win world titles faster than other people, or other fighters from other countries. I explained what's a journeyman, things like that. So in this particular video, I wanted to talk about and I wanted to explore what the hell does it mean to be a world champion in this day and age? Because it seems like, every, you know, when you watch boxing today, this guy's a world champion, that guy's a world champion, everybody's the world champion. So in the grand scheme of things, what does it mean to be a world champion um, in this modern day of boxing so let's talk about it let's let's start with the positives why does a fighter want to be world champion okay well that, that's kind of self-explanatory because when any fighter decides when anybody when any person decides to become a professional boxer you know the the, the goal is always to be a world champion because um you know not many people on this earth can have that title you know and there's a lot of respect that comes with that because you know to box just to box under the lights you know, 99.9% .9 of people will never, ever do that. They'll never have ever had that courage to get under those lights, you know? So you, that comes with a lot of respect in itself. But then to to become world champion, we're talking about 0.1% of the world will become world champion. So it's a lot of respect that comes with that. A lot of sacrifice, a lot of tireless years of work and, and, and blood, sweat, and tears go into becoming world champion. So that, that, that you have to really um, respect them for the sacrifice they made to become world champion. Um, that's just the, that's just, that's, that, that's as the athlete, but like then the business side of it is like in boxing, there's many people that pick up boxing gloves, many people that pick up, pick up boxing gloves and become professional fighters, you know, all over the world. And only 0.1% of that will become world champion. And, you know, with that being said, and with that being established, it's like, that's where the, when you become world champion, that's where you really make the money. You know, that's where the world knows your name. That's when you're going to be known and that's when, you, when you're going to be able to see the fruits of your labor so to speak in boxing boxing is a very short window to make money the money is not like vast it's very scarce it's very scarce in boxing and only a few people will will, will leave the sport with enough money to to, to 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 live well after boxing and um the first step towards living well after boxing if you're a fighter is to become world champion and you and you keep that belt the long and the longer you can keep that belt the more you can set yourself up, up after the sport so like um if you if you have a world title you're going to be on TV a lot you're going to box on network on on Showtime boxing or the zone or whatever it is your network affiliation is and that's going to get you more exposure more exposure means you can have more fans more fans means that there's going to be more demand for your name more demand for your name means there's potential sponsorship opportunities endorsement opportunities things that are going to make you money when you're not fighting and that's the thing that boxers the fighters really need uh more of in boxing is is, is is those things that are going to make the money when they're not fighting you know what i'm saying so it's, it's it's just very important to be world champion when you're a fighter not just for the sake of being called world champion but for the sake of your bank account moving forward so very important now going over to the negative side being a world champion is still a great thing don't 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 get it don't don't get it wrong if you can win a belt if you can win a belt a wbc belt or wbo belt ibf wba you know that is still a great thing because you know it's hard to do but the thing is, it's, it's, a, it's, a lot, it's, it's a lot easier to win a belt now than it was, let's say, 70 years ago, 60 years ago, 50 years ago. Because unfortunately, for better or for worse, these sanctioning bodies have diluted, devalued, and watered down what it, what it used to mean to be called a world champion. You know, boxing now we have, you, go to, you, you, you can go to sanctioning bodies. We'll, we'll use the WBA, for example. You have your super champions, your regular champions, your gold champions, you got champions everywhere. So because of that, that causes a lot of confusion. And that's never good. You never want to confuse the paying customers because at the end of the day, the boxing fans are the paying customers. And a lot of the boxing fans, particularly the casual ones, hell, even the hardcores, 
Boxing fans, both casual and hardcore, sometimes we all have a hard time understanding what the hell ca a super champion is as opposed to the regular champion. And then, you know, all these different rules and regulations and the minutia of, 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 of the politics of boxing. It just muddies up the waters. So you have a lot of confusion caused. You have a lot of um, just a lot of things to interpret. And, and there's not a lot of clarity when it comes to the championship picture in these weight classes at, at times. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, it's unfortunate because, you know, like in the past, when you were a world champion, that really like, yo, that, when you said that was the champ, yo, you, it was like, yo, that was the champ. He's the champ. Now it's like, oh, well, he's the he's the regular champion. and He's the super champion. and He's that champion. And it, and it really just it's not good for boxing. It's not good for the fighters. It's not good for anybody. It really isn't. Um, and it hurts the sport more than it helps it because the casual fans are confused. The hardcore fans are confused. Everybody's confused. And you and you just don't want that kind of confusion. Um, and aside from that, you know, the fighters themselves, like, you got a lot of fighters, right? And, and, and I've seen this because we're, we're in the era of social media. We're in the era of Instagram and Twitter and all that stuff. And a lot of fighters, I've seen fighters win regular belts and interim belts and all this stuff. And then go on social media and they'll use the ignorance of the public. A lot, most people don't know anything about boxing. Like, like, like Roger Mayweather said, most people don't know, know about boxing. So they'll use people's lack of boxing knowledge against them. And they'll, and they'll like posture themselves as a world champion. And then this gets, this, this gets people, 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 people don't know. So then people get in, the, in, in these fighters' comment sections and they'll say, Oh man, you the champ. You a killer. You this, you that. And then that inflates the fighters' heads up. And now the fighter who has it, he may have not have beaten the best fighter in his weight class for that world title or for that, that trinket that he's holding. And, um, and now that fighter, has a, that fighter is living in a false sense of reality. He, he's thinking he's something that he's actually not. Now he holds a belt, but he's not a champion. And that's another thing in boxing. It's like you got lots of fighters that, ha that, ha that have belts. You know, I, I call them trinket holders, you know, because these titles are trinkets. So I, when, a, when a guy to me isn't a world champion, a, tr a proper champion, a real champion, you will hear me refer to them as a trinket holder. So you have a lot of trinket holders in boxing. Very few champions. You know what I'm saying? Very, 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 very few champions. Um, with that being said, it's like it's also gotten so bad in boxing that th the thing is, right? So people are using the titles they that you can use these titles for marketing purposes um and most of the time when i say marketing purposes i mean in a bad way so like for example because a lot of these fighters win r random belts interim belts and they can call themselves champion because they can call themselves champion the networks can call themselves champion right so what winds up happening is a fighter who's not that who's not an elite fighter an elite class fighter who is not that high in the pecking order as far as the best fighters in his weight class. He might he might win a he might win a random interim belt. He might, by way of circumstance, find himself in a fight with another lesser fighter, fighting for some sort of interim belt or some belt that doesn't really mean anything. And he might win that fight. He and he wins that fight, and because of that, he can now be called himself a champion, right? And then a fighter who actually is elite. Who, who, who is creme de la creme, who is one of the best fighters out there, can then fight that fighter in a mismatch fight, but it, 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 you can deflect the term of mismatch being labeled or uh, being thrown in the fight because that fight, that fighter has a belt, okay? And people don't know anything about, most people don't know anything about boxing. An example of this that I can use, um, Two examples I could use of this, recent examples I could use of this are, I use one in the heavyweight division. You know, you had Charles Martin who won the, who won the IBF uh, world heavyweight title by way of circumstance. Tyson Fury vacated the belts due to, due to personal problems and um, the, the, the IBF ordered a fight with him and Glasgow, another guy that wasn't that great of a heavyweight, and he won the belt uh, because the guy broke his knee or broke his leg and eventually he so he basically eventually when the time came he fought anthony joshua and parlayed it into a very nice payday um but like that's an example and to be honest at that time everybody knew even though anthony joshua wasn't um who he is now you know he was still at a certain level to where you knew that that was a cherry pick that wasn't gonna be no competitive fight 
So that's an example there. And then another example I can give you is of uh, Canelo Alvarez. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm known for not liking Canelo Alvarez because I feel like he uses, he, he maneuvers the boxing business to the best of his advantage, abilities and cons the public in a lot of ways. But look, one way, one fight he got away with, and this was one of the worst mismatches of all time, was his fight against Rocky Fielding. Oh my gosh. Now, this is a, this, this is a fight where people like myself criticize um, Canelo Alvarez because we feel like this was one of the worst cherry picks in boxing at the time but Rocky Fielding had a belt I can't remember which belt it was but he won a he won a random belt against a fighter by the name of Tyrone Zoiger Tyrone Zoiger from Germany it was a fight where he was an underdog and um, Zoiger was the favorite he knocked out Zoiger I believe and uh, he captured a, a random like interim belt or maybe like it might have been like a yeah like an interim belt it was some, something random and because he had that belt, when the time came for Canelo Alvarez to experiment and test the waters in the super middleweight division, he felt okay doing that against a guy like Rocky Fielding because Rocky Fielding had a random belt that he won. And uh, Canelo, Canelo knows boxing. His team knows boxing very, very well. You know, this is a fight where if you look at the skill sets, if you look at the styles, if you look at what Rocky Fielding brings to the table, how you doing? Rocky Fielding has a limited skill set. So it was a perfect fight for Canelo. So these are just two examples I can give you off the, off the top of my head of guys that won belts by circumstance, by, you know, just the boxing business being in their favor. Um, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it's compromised and ruined and diluted, devalued the competitive integrity of boxing. You know, at the end of the day, they, they always say... This is a term you hear these these fighters and these manager, managers and promoters always say. They say, "Oh, this this is a business, right? This sport is a business. This fight, this this sport is all about money." But you know what? I understand them. I understand them to a point. But I don't know any boxing. I don't know anybody who became a fan of the sport because um, of money and and, and 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 purse splits and and purse bids and all that bullshit and all the all the all the minutia and, and nonsense that, that happens in the boxing business. Nobody ever became a boxing fan because of the boxing business. People became everybody who's become a boxing fan became a boxing fan because of the great fights of yesteryear and the great fights like like Chocolatito versus Estrada too and Hagler Hearns and Gotti Ward and and Gotti versus Ivan Robinson and, and Rocky Graziano versus Tony Zale and, and Muhammad Ali versus Sonny Liston and Muhammad Ali versus George Foreman and George Foreman Michael Moore and, and all the great fights. All the great fights that boxing has given people over the years, these are the things that have made people fans. Not not purse splits, not A side, B side, not uh, uh, get, uh, revenues and things like that. Those are things that people, when they, after they become boxing fans, they, 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 they learn about these things so they can properly interpret the sport. But nobody, nobody becomes a fan of boxing because of those things. So I say that to say that, you know, I feel like boxing, the boxing business, the world title thing it needs it needs some sort of overhaul because you know this the the, the 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 integrity of this sport and what it means to be a world champion has been so watered down and so diluted that now we got fighters and i'm not going to say their names or get into it but like sometimes you even got fighters who use the competitive who, who use the landscape of their division guys that have belts that they know aren't the best fighters in the weight class because that's what it's gotten to it's gotten to a point in boxing where the best fighters in the weight classes don't even have belts and certain fighters with certain political power in boxing can use the weak landscape of the division to, 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 avoid, to avoid and dodge and duck the most threatening fighters to them. And that's just not what we need in boxing. So to close it out, it's great to be a world champion. It's, it's great for the fighter to be a world champion. It puts them in a great position of power to, to make money for their career. And at the end of the day, I'm, I'm all about fighters making money for their careers. But at the same time, I'm also about seeing great fights. I'm also about competitiveness. I'm also about seeing the best fight the best. And um, a lot of times with these belts, the sanctioning bodies, the sanctioning fees, it, it really compromises the best fight the best. And, you know, so it, being a world champion doesn't mean what it once did. And hopefully I have explained that uh, in a way where you guys can understand and interpret what it is I'm saying. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. In your own words, what does it mean to be a world champion in the boxing today? Does it really mean what it used to? Give me all your thoughts pertaining to that down below. Make sure you take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just kidding from Daniel. So until next time, take care guys.